All right. I'm not sure how well that other video came out, so let's do it again. I have my knife line here. I'm going to come within a sixteenth of an inch of it, making sure that I'm working on the X or waist side that I marked before. Smack it. Follow the line over. Do it again. Now I come at a 45 degree angle, still on the waist side, and I work into that compression mark, slice, whatever you want to call it, that I just made. Again, I'm a sixteenth of an inch away from where I need to get to. There's a reason for that. comes with uh, having done this a number of times, you cannot start at the knife line. Your chisel will deflect because there's no place for the stress to go. The wedge action of the chisel actually works against you. So take a look at this right here. I'm leaving a little flat. This one that's done, you can see I still left a sixteenth of an inch of a flat. That has a purpose when I flip the piece over to work on the other side. It helps support the part I'm chopping out. It ends up uh, saving a tiny little bit of tear out. It gives you more control. Last move here. I'm about halfway through the thickness of this piece of wood. This is right where I want to be. Now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there's only a little bit of wood left before my line, and I have the accuracy, excuse me, of the scribed knife line. The actual blade of the chisel locks into it. I can't twist it. That gives me great accuracy. Hold the chisel at 90 degrees, firm blow. It chops a straight shoulder right where I need it. This piece just fell away because nothing there to hinder it from releasing its energy without damaging my joint. Again, come back in just with a little hand action. To no mallet there. Just clean up this little divot inside of here. And that side is done. Oops, move this around so you can see. That's how it looks, right? Not bad. Okay, and again from this side, you can really see I have not affected the thickness of the wood, so when I turn it around, it'll be well supported.